Welcome back to Kotlin Bytes. In my last episode, I showed you how to bind our tic-tac-toe layout to Kotlin code for this Android app that we're creating. In this episode, I will show you how to create a view model to store our game's state. Let's get started. View models are used to prepare data for the UI. In our case, the activity class is the UI. Ideally, we should keep as little code as possible within the activity class. The code here should only interact with the views. Therefore, our view model will take care of some of the game logic and hold the game's current state. There is a third element called the model that we will also create in this episode. The model is our domain object that represents our data. In our example, this will be the game board. This design pattern is called MVVM, or Model View View Model. It's also the recommended approach for Android. Start by creating a new view model class. We'll name it after our activity since it'll only exist here. Have it extend the view model class. View model is a particular helper class provided by Android Jetpack. Android Jetpack also requires us to instantiate this class in a specific way so that the view model retains its state. In the module level build.gradle file, add this fragment ktx dependency. There are a few helper functions that we will use from this, even though in this tutorial, we're not gonna be using fragments. Okay, sync and return to your main activity. Here we can create a new field variable for our view model. Using a delegated property, we can ensure our view model will be instantiated correctly. The by view models portion here is what we added to our dependencies. Next, let's create a few models to hold our game data. First, create a board object. It'll contain a mutable map that will represent our game board. Let the keys be of type cell and the values of type cell state. We will need to create these. So create an enum called cell, and then list each possible cell position. I will name the vertical position and then the horizontal position. Then create a sealed class called cell state. Cell state could technically also be an enum, However, I want to mix it up for you guys. We'll add our three states here with their associated drawable icons. Now, back to our board class. Create a method to get the state of a specific cell. We'll take what's in the game board object. However, if the cell does not exist in the game board, we'll return an empty cell state instead. Switch to our view model. Create an instance of our board. Notice it requires an instance of mutable map. We could either create that instance here, or we could set an empty instance as the default within the constructor. Notice that we're not required to define the type here since Kotlin doesn't require it. Then we'll also make this field variable private. Next, create a public field variable called liveboard. This will be our live data instance that our UI will observe. Back in our activity, remove update board cells and add an observer to our live board variable. Add an observer variable to the activity right here and call update board cells from within the Lambda. Update the method to include our new board object as an argument. Then update the image resource assignments with their respective board state cells. And that's it, let's test it. At the moment, everything is empty, which is fine. We'll take care of that soon. Notice how the click events still work. We'll take advantage of this in the next episode. That's it for this episode of Kotlin Bytes. Stay tuned for the next episode in the series, explaining how to interact with the view model to update the game board and reflect on the UI. However, until then, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please like and consider subscribing. Of course, the source code and additional resources are in the description below. If there's anything you'd like me to further explain, please message me or leave a comment. Otherwise, have a great day. See you guys.